All right. Hey, hey, how's it going? I think we're live. Sorry, the timer restarted on me there before I could hit go. Um, hey, how's it going? We got James, we got Yonalith, we got Leah. How are you guys doing? The diehards, <laughs> the only ones who can make it. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to see you all. Um, working on the Hiccup Van Brace still. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't get anywhere further in patterning since I talked to you guys last. Um, been doing a lot of other things. Um, also prepping for Fanex. Salt Lake Fanex coming up really soon. <laughs> Got a couple panels I'm doing for that and uh, whatnot. So yeah, anyway, lots to do, getting ready for that and everything. Um, but we are go good to start on this today. So I think, just looking at my mannequin here, I'm gonna guess this ends at about my watch line. So in reference to my arm and then the elbow hits like right about back here. So I'm going to build it on this mannequin arm right here so that I can use both my hands to be able to do it. But I needed to know kind of where this ended so that I can um, reference that in building the uh, van brace. So I found all my reference images that I had collected before. So I've got them here on my phone and uh, and whatnot. But um, yeah, so let me grab tinfoil, let me grab tape, and if I can find any that the kids haven't taken, <laughs> they discovered the power of uh, masking tape and contractor's tape and they've been um, running around the house with it. So let me grab the uh, patterning supplies and then we'll jump into it. So, hey April, what's up? So what I've decided I'm going to do is make basically just a regular band brace that fits around my arm normal, um, just like you would see that fits pretty close to the arm. And then we're gonna build out a little section in the patterning that has kind of that uh, angled piece that comes off of that and sticks out a little bit further um, to create kind of a little uh, cavern on the inside, but a surface to mount things to that goes around the arm. And then the other one will overlap where it has the overlaps and then come out and create kind of that little space inside to be able to add the little fan that flips out. So, um, let's see. So yeah, let me grab tin foil and tape. And we'll jump right in. Got my tin foil, got my tape. I'm gonna actually put on my ultimate crafting gauntlet here. So that I have my other supplies right on my hand. And uh, April says, I'm so busy, I have no time to craft, but I am helping Susie Crates digitize a pattern for an Eternals cosplay. Oh, sweet. That's cool. Um, okay. So if this ends at my watch line, that's actually a pretty good spot um, to start the van brace because my watch fits on my wrist and I can pretty comfortably um, move my hand my without it getting in the way so i feel like that's a pretty good spot to go with 
um, to start. So I'm going to take my tin foil. Oh, sweet, James. So if we're on Thursdays, you're able to make it? Well, glad we could have you tonight. Okay, so for those of you that just joined, I decided I'm doing this in kind of a two-part thing for the van brace. So the uh, the first layer of the van brace will just fit snug to the arm, just like a regular van brace. Make that around. Tighten this tin foil down. Crunch it so it's fitting to the arm all around. So let me switch to another camera angle um, to where you guys can see kind of a little bit more what I'm doing on the table, from the table angle, um, as well as this front one. So let's go there. Oh yeah, that kind of gets in my face, huh? I forgot. I need to slide over this way. Okay. So basically, I'm just taking uh, some pieces of tape and just getting them ready to go and just placing them. I guess you can't see that from the other camera angle. I'm placing them just on the edge of the table here. Just so I have some kind of ready to go. I'm going to start right down here. tape along this edge of the van brace or of where the uh, tin foil overlaps right there. So now remember when you're doing the tin and tape method stuff, put more tin foil on than you think you'll actually need. So I'm going actually past my elbow point here. Um, with the tin foil because I'd rather have more on there and then be able to draw what I want it to actually look like and just cut that out rather than not having enough and trying to add more tin foil, add more tape, that kind of thing as you go. do some long pieces. So what I tend to like to do when I'm taping stuff up is I'll do um, alternating kind of between, I'll do long strips in one direction in a couple spots. And then I'll come back and I'll tape in the opposite direction. And that kind of helps give some good solid like kind of support structure beneath and then start going in a different direction just to kind of tie those together. It makes it so it's less likely for some of your pieces to, um, for a piece of tape to just kind of fall off. As you start cutting into it, sometimes you can get a seam where you didn't want one because that's just where the tape was and it just went got loose in that area or something like that. But doing kind of this crisscrossing gives it a little bit more um, of a overall structure.
So we're going to use a combination here of just regular tin and tape, form fitting it directly to the body, right? Like we've done before. But then we're also going to do some basket build out techniques for the second layer, okay? So this will be kind of a two layer pattern that we're gonna draw out here. So then two after I've done a bunch in one direction, I'll kind of switch again and do some. Long ones in another direction. Your arm on. There we go. So now the reason why I haven't attached this pauldron uh, is because I'm not going to attach it to the chest plate. You would think that that would make sense of where to attach it, just like have some kind of strap you know, that comes up and attaches to the, the chest plate kind of thing. But um, with the movement that Hiccup has uh, with those pauldrons and how they move on the chest plate, um, it, you, could prob you could possibly, if you attach the strap in the right place, um, you could get that movement and everything. But something I noticed is on the, in the movie, when um, the bad guy is like, ripping off his like wings and different things as they're like falling to try to just he's like if i'm going down i'm taking it somebody else with me you're not gonna be able to fly out of here um he rips off one of his pauldrons and the arm piece stays so that's obviously just attached just around his arm and not attached to the other pieces the arm piece stays the paul the chest plate stays the pauldron gets ripped off and it actually rips off part of, uh, you can see his skin underneath, it rips off part of his suit. And so what that makes me think is that um, the pauldron is done how a lot of times knights uh, pauldrons would be done where it might have like a, a little pin that it'll like pivot on into or kind of uh, attach into onto the, the chest plate piece, but that uh, it has a string attached to the gambeson, um, which is like their undershirt thing, that uh, then ties into the pauldron from underneath. Um, and so that kind of makes me think that uh, Hiccup probably did a similar thing with uh, tying the, the ties that were on the uh, his undersuit to the pauldron, and when that got ripped off, it ripped his undersuit, and that's why you have that little gash in his, his shoulder um, as well. So anyway. That's my theories on it, and, and if that is the case, then that would allow for like a lot of movement for the, the pauldron to be able to move kind of up and down on the chest plate as well, um, kind of with the shoulder, and, uh, and just follow kind of that uh, shoulder point. So. so that's why I haven't attached that yet, so that's why it's loose and can just kind of fall off, um, is I'm waiting till I have the undersuit and I'm gonna attach it that way, so. Um, okay, so I think there's some spots I missed right there. So I think we're getting pretty close to having this all taped up. Let's see, we 
got some more people on. Let's see who we got. I know I kind of stepped in the way of that there for you guys a little bit, but okay. So we've got ZK Slayer. Hey, hey, what's up? And then <laughs> tinning and taping a kid here soon. Nice. <laughs> Um, wants you to make him a Samus. Oh, wow, cool. I'll be sweet. Nice, fun stuff. Okay. So, here we are. Now, at this point, I like to start with making some of my um, outline shapes and things like that using a pencil to begin with. I'm trying to find one of my good, well-lit um, Images here where I can see kind of a basic outline. That's pretty good right there. Oh yeah, wow, that's actually, that's some great detail right there. Okay, cool. So, and he needs like this to, All right, so we're gonna start here on the end. And I'm just gonna mark my outer edge here to begin with, which I'm gonna have just be the edge of this mannequin arm because um, I checked it and this ends right at where the edge of my watch is on my arm is where this ends, which is a really good spot actually to have a van brace end because I know I'm used to wearing my watch and when I flex my arm, I don't, it's not, uh, my watch is not hitting my arm or messing with my movement of my wrist. So, There we go. <laughs> Let's see. See, you can't do that when you're just patterning on yourself. So make sure to check out my um, how to make your own duct tape dummy video so that you can disarm your patterning dummy here like that. Okay, cool. So we'll go with that for now. And then I want to determine where it needs to end on this side. And 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to mark kind of the crook of the elbow there. so that I give myself plenty of room. Now, the nice thing is, is I'm wearing a van brace right here. And I know that I can easily like check the length here and see if I go to here, that might work. For the length there to make it so it's not too long to where it really gets in your way of your elbow when you bend um, and I'm definitely gonna have it scoop a little bit more as it comes into that underarm area just from experience with this other And I think for the most part, this under piece is going to just run pretty just straight across after that. Um, because it's really the outside piece that then kind of comes up and scoops around the elbow. So, um, let's see, cut out pieces for a Metroid helmet, but I haven't glued it together yet. Nice. That's the one good thing about making cosplay based on one of your own characters is that you don't have to worry about finding good references. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Where'd you get your pattern? Make her on Instagram. Yeah, she shared the pattern for free and I've got had it ever since. Nice. Do have some good news. Swelling in my right arm is going away. <laughs> well, that's good. Glad the swelling's going down. Um, <laughs> talking about me ripping my mannequin's arm off, being brutal. Um, <laughs> um, can we get Olivia? I don't know if she'll be able to join us. She's getting the kids down. And then I think she was hoping to just kind of rest a little bit. So, um, Nice. All right, cool. So... This image is great. I need to see a different angle of it though. Decent. Like if I have, where does my elbow hit on this? If I have my That's about where my elbow is on the outside of my arm.
somewhere in there. So. Cool, cool. So, that being said there, I think for the most part, once I have that basic design with kind of that. Whoa, what do we got? Robert Cooper just joined the Apprentice Squad. Woohoo, that startled me. <laughs> awesome, awesome new subscriber, Robert Cooper. I don't know that you're on listening to the live stream, but if you are, welcome. Um, okay. Cool. So I think that that's probably pretty good right there. On the inside, we've got our nice little curve, a little scoop, and then I'm just gonna kind of mark. So I'm looking at it as to kind of like where the bottom of that arm is, right? Um, like where the bottom of the forearm is, and then where it transitions into this piece that comes out here. So I'm looking at, at it kind of from this way and I'm holding my fingers up on either side to kind of see, okay, hey, where does it start to make that transition? And you know what? I think I'm gonna go a little bit more like that. And then he has that slider thing that happens right after the transition and it needs to be basically on the top of the arm, kind of on the top right here. So, I feel like that's gonna work pretty well. Okay. Yeah, all right. So if that's the case, then I wanna take basically my midpoint between these two edges and I want to center it looks like his van brace is um, centered where it connects right um, in between those two points pretty symmetrically and I had a really good image showing that here earlier So, I don't know if you guys can see, this is actually the picture uh, I was talking about with the pauldron thing. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can see it with his pauldron missing there's actually a piece of his um, shoulder showing as well from the suit getting ripped off or the pauldron getting ripped off. Um, here we go. Okay. Sorry, just trying to find again I had a really good close-up one earlier okay I'm getting close
so. Yes. What was it? Oh, here we go. This is a good one. Yeah, so actually, it looks like there's a little bit less towards the top side than there is towards the bottom. So I was saying, like, the seam on his thing is kind of split between even between these two but I think that actually it's a little bit closer towards this top side over here than it is towards the other side so it's not quite middle middle um, so the, I'd say it's probably maybe, so here's a little trick. I don't know if you guys have ever done this or if I've told you this before. So when you're kind of trying to find a reference proportional kind of thing, uh, trying to figure out kind of just basic proportions, um, like I wanna know this side of, of that before it meets here how big is that roughly compared to this over here? Bud, hey bud, just a second. I hear you knocking, just a second. I'm in the middle of saying something. Um, you can use, uh, one of the reasons I love mechanical pencils is you can uh, put the lead out a little bit further on there and you can like put it out to the length that is that first section and then I can kind of roughly get an idea in this second section, hold it there, and then hold my lead point there. So it's almost a one-third to two-thirds split there. So I'm going to roll with that. So if we use our measuring tape here, and we go from this edge to this one, and I see that is about... five and a half inches. So if I want to split that into thirds, I go, okay, Google, what's five and a half divided by three? The answer is approximately 1.83. 1.83, so, I mean, to give us a rough, like just in quick math, that's gonna be like one and just over three quarters inch. So, if I do about one and three quarters there, or maybe I just go two. Sorry, just a second, guys.
All right, guys, we're getting pretty close to the hour mark here. Let's see. Uh, the black uh, duct tape body looks like a black mold creature from Resident Evil 7. Oh, that sounds creeper. <laughs> um... Yeah, sorry. Um, we don't have any Halloween M and M's yet, but uh, I don't. Do they have like a special Halloween version of M and M's? Good night, Leia. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Sammy Seabones, what's up? Alrighty, awesome, awesome. So, what we were just saying. So if I do two, then that leaves like three and a half to the rest of the way. So I'm just gonna go with that. Right around like two inches to this seam. Because I feel like that looks, that'll look good. Oh, do you want him to... Probably should have named her Myrtle because she likes to lay behind the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and she does not like coming out of the bathroom. Well, all of our pets have Harry Potter names. Harry Potter character names. Except mine and ours. Ah, ah. Except mine's. Yeah. Oh, okay, can you go to bed? Anyway, I just decided it was time and I needed a kitty. <laughs> So soft. So I thought I'd pop in and say hi with her. Trying to get after guy? <laughs> anyway, I don't have anything cool to say. I've been really sick today. And Skylar cut my hair this week. It was down to like my tailbone. So you can also cut hair. So anyway. Sorry, I interrupted. But there's a kitty, ouch. Oh, sorry, did I stir? Yeah, she's totally freaked out. I'm sorry. It's fine, it's, kind it's of my fault. sound for the little kitty. It's okay. It's okay. She's like, I don't like this one bit. Do you like the foam box? <laughs> Probably smells too much like Anyway. Box. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll leave. No, you did. I thought you don't want to meet our pretty Helena girl. I mean, it's her tail. Come on. So pretty. <laughs> All right. Well, I was just getting close to wrapping up here anyway, honey. Okay. Do you want to join in for the wrap up? Sure. We'll just move this guy out of the way. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, yeah. So. Um, essentially I'm just going to split that and then from there, maybe I might draw on kind of where the straps are going to go. There's three of them spread out throughout here. Um, and so I'll just give like maybe a half inch at the top, a half inch at the bottom, and then just spread those out evenly. Um, and then from there, then I would just go in and I was, I'm going to just do the basket build out method and come from where this overlap happens. 
and just build out the part that um, kind of comes up and um, will stick out a little bit more that comes up past his elbow and just build that out starting at those two lines um, there for the kind of the second layer of the, the van brace. So yeah, I feel like that's some pretty good progress. Um, I'm going to keep working on it tonight um, after we end here, but uh, we might, I might bring it into the living room. We'll watch a show or something like that while we, <laughs> while I pattern um, to make it a little bit more interesting, but thank you guys so much. Let's see. Kitty is so cute. Everyone's saying hi to her. You're popular. Mm -hmm. Pretty lady. Hi, April. Thank you. <laughs> what does Cedric think of Helena, Sammy asked? Cedric's pretty chill. He's yeah. interested. He was a total nut oh my goodness. when we brought her home, the though. The first day we brought her back. So obnoxious. He was just, it wasn't like he was being obnoxious towards her. It was just like he could sense that there was a new... Thing that could get attention here <laughs> and he was just like breathing so heavy and just like just like going up to us and just like looking at us and walking around like kind of in like a like i don't know manic yeah just kind of like totally. had this high level of just like he's usually pretty awkward chill, energy around him for a bit like weirdo but yeah so um but since then he's just he's kind of like caesar and he's like yeah, and she's so funny. She, her. like, hisses at him, but it's, like, this breath. Like, she doesn't really make a sound with it. Her hiss is kind of like... <sighs> <laughs> and she's only, like, <laughs> meowed once. Yeah, she's pretty quiet. Yeah. But, anyway, her hiss was so funny. She was, like, hissing at him. And she's, like... She's, just, like, like, <sighs> <sighs> just, like, is, like, breathing on him. <laughs> um... But yeah, he's pretty chill about her. He's, he's just kind of yeah, like, he's, he's just curious, but... like, what are you? But he's pretty good about not like, I mean, if he saw a random cat, like on in the, the yard, in the he, yard would he would like try want to chase it just to be like, Mah! but, um, but yeah, but he's, He's warmed up to her, and he's like, okay, it's just another pet in the family. Um, let's see. Sammy asks, uh, I couldn't find your panel for Fanex. So the easiest way I found to find it, if you go into the app, go to just like a, the little hamburger menu on the top left, and click that, and then do the global search, and start typing my name, and then click the, the tab for guess, and then you'll see my name if you click on that then you can rate me as a guest. So give me five stars while you're there. And then... <laughs> you haven't seen his panel yet, but give me five stars. But you guys stars. know it's gonna be good. So mm -hmm. just give me five stars already. Um, but anyway, and then you click on view panels and it'll show you all the panels that I'm a participant in. So um, there's the two. So unfortunately they, had, they booked me for three, but because of the fact that they had to cancel everything last year, there were some holdover panels that they had scheduled for last year and things like that and then also too with some scheduling issues they ended up with not as many rooms as they had planned so they had to cut a couple panels and because I've done um, uh, the forging with foam one uh, previously there they said hey you know we want we like this one it brings a lot of people but since we recent since you have done it recently let's pull that one and we'll do your other two that are newer ones so, um, so I, I'm doing two, it's going to be the tin and tape method, the secret to armor and helmet patterning. Um, and then there's the, um, and then the other one is the five techniques you need to know, or five foam smithing techniques that you need to know to make anything out of EVA foam kind of thing. So should be, they're both fun demonstration ones. I always take a lot of questions during it, the, the whole process throughout because I know a lot of people like to just be able to ask questions and nobody ever gives enough time at the end. So um, it's a demonstration. I'll have like a camera up in the front, putting it on the big screen, what I'm doing so everyone can see. I'll be walking around, talking, asking questions to other people too. It's really fun. So um, they got rid of the app for you? 
Maybe just go on your app Just go, store. Uh, yeah, if you have Android or Apple, I know for sure it's on the Google Play Store. Just go to type in like Salt Lake Comic Con or Fanex no, or... Yeah, it's Fanex for me. <laughs> type in Fanex. Just give up on that. And then, and then uh, uh, download it, and then you should be able to, to see it. They've got the stuff updated in there now, so... Um, yeah, hopefully you can find that and you can like start to schedule what, what panels you want to go to. You can add it to your schedule on the app and it'll keep track of the ones that you said you wanted to go to and kind of put it into a little calendar thing for you. So yeah, anyway, pretty sweet. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Sorry. It's kind of been, it was delayed and then, um, we started a little bit later tonight, but, uh, it was fun hanging out with you guys. You guys are the champs that tuned in. And, uh, oh, it looks like James is saying bye. Hey, James, see ya. Bye. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much. We'll, wow, you know what? Looking at the calendar, we only have one more stream before. Stream. Oh, well, I guess technically two because it's on the weekend after. So, yeah, this ne next week and then after that, the next week is Fanex. So, uh, just depending on how prepared I am for the, <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to actually say right now that I probably won't do a stream on the 15th. The 15th. So we're, we're just, let's just plan on not having it. Cause I know that I'm going to be like, con crunch. yeah, in full out con crunch, both for getting everything put together for my panels and trying to finish my costume. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so we'll, let's just say that no stream on the 15th, but we have one more next week then before that. So, alrighty guys, thank you so much for tuning in. You guys rock. I'll give you guys just a second here to finish chatting in the comments uh, as it's kind of wrapping up the stream, but I'll be signing off and I wish you guys a great weekend. Have fun with a long weekend. Hopefully you guys have some fun plans and we'll catch you next week. Until then, cosplay on my friends. See ya. Good night.